Welcome to Built Different, a podcast by boots on the ground workers who are built different and like to get sight done. We're here to listen, question the status quo, and continue to find better ways to build the world. We are back at it again for another episode of the Built Different Podcast. Joining me is our co-host, Mr. Chris Jervy, and today's special guest, John Andrus from Andrus Construction. What's up, Johnny? Welcome to the party. Thank you for having me. Yeah, we're excited to, to spend a little time with you today. So yeah, man, let's uh, let's jump in and, and get started. We kind of have a we're going to talk a little bit about your your past and your journey into construction. We're going to talk a little bit about uh, your your experience with construction site, and and then we're going to talk a little bit about uh, you kind of circle back to Andrus and, and you know this is the built different podcast. What makes you guys what makes you guys different? What makes you guys uh, different than others that are out there? And and I and I think I know what some of those things are, but it's going to be it's going to be good to talk to you about some of that stuff. So let's jump in with a little bit of background about you. Uh, you know, how long have you been working in construction? Uh, well, I've been working construction for Andrus for seven years now. Uh, started as a, an intern, which uh, internships are now not, they're real internships and not what I was. I was a laborer um, with the title of intern. Um, back when I was 18, started, I started uh, you know, sweeping on jobs, keeping the, keeping the parking lots clean of dirt. Um, setting up handrails. Um, they didn't even give me nails. I had to go pick nails out of boards to go put up you know, safety rails and stuff. Um, Wait, is, so that, is that for real? You nails? actually were not given a box of nails. You were told they gave to me. Go, they gave me a hammer for nails. They, I, they gave me a hammer and looked. said, "Go take the nails out of the ones that are sticking up in the boards and use those to put up handrails." So I got a hammer and a, a hammer holster for my tool belt. Uh, yeah, it was great. Later on that summer, I, I, I graduated from broom to hammer with uh tool belt holster and then, uh, a big promotion and later on Bobcat promotion side. So yeah. Yeah. So it started at the bottom. It's got to have started before then. Tell, tell us more. Like one of the things I love about this podcast, all two times of it so far is like really kind of getting to know the the person behind the the professional. So, you know, I know, I know it's a family affair for you guys. Like, tell me a little bit more about like really early on, like some of the formative experiences for you. Like it's okay to get into Lincoln logs. If you have to just go as far uh, back as you can remember. I love my Lincoln logs. I loved my Legos. I was also a connects fan. If you know what those are. Heck yeah. Um, but, uh, you know, growing up being in the family uh, business kind of thing, um, went on Saturdays. Saturdays were spent going to jobs. Uh, when I was little, it was smaller jobs around the neighborhood. We'd walk, you know, um, houses and do house tours. My dad would point out things. Um, as I got older, it was going to our job sites um, on the weekends. Um, you know, always had a, a Hooters lunch afterwards that I had to be careful about going home and saying that I, we went to Hooters. Uh, my dad always, my dad, my dad always educated me on that. You know. Uh, we did not go there. So, um, but yeah, <laughs> great times uh, growing up in the construction industry. You guys um, went to the food, right? It was all about the food. The wings really are the nice, best. Really great nice wings. wings. Yeah. Yeah. And, and it was just closest to the job site, you know? Okay. So. Just convenience um, more than anything. Convenience. Yeah. I got you. So it was early for you. Uh, you know, like Very early. you got a lot of like early on experience. What about your dad? Like, what 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 do you think drew him to construction in the first place? Not to get his too dad. far off topic, but I'm interested. Yeah, no, his, his dad. So my grandfather um, has been in construction his whole life. Um, he he flipped houses and did that kind of stuff um, to support the family back um, back in his early years when my dad was growing up. Um, Started a big construction company, um, sold it, and then you know has now started Andrus. Um, so it's kind of in the family. I'm third generation Texas builder, so uh, it's kind of cool to keep keep going with it. I I uh, sometimes have to remind them though that I'm a little bit more technologically savvy than they are, and so we got to get rid of some of their old school ways. But uh, we're working on that. 
Still use a hammer and a holster, though. You know that was that was thirteen years ago. How long? How long were you in the field? And 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 I know that there's a story here that I want uh, I want you to share with our our listeners, <laughs> our listener. Uh, well, about 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 in- moving your way <laughs> out of the job site. <laughs> yeah. Well. Uh, it, to get out of the, the field as an intern, as out as a, like a full laborer, um, it's one Friday afternoon, uh, a dark, dark day, uh, where basically it was me and one equipment operator. And I was going to be the late guy, set up all the cones and all the lights and stuff because we were working inside of a, <laughs> inside of a hotel, uh, redoing the, the lobby in a hotel. And on Friday afternoons through, sun, uh, through Sunday, they would actually have people staying in the rooms that fed this area. So our job site would kind of become public. And uh, <laughs> one day they were digging a trench and the as showed the uh, sanitary line at 14 feet. So we, went, we weren't going to hit them. They were actually installed at seven feet and we hit it <laughs> clean, just straight broke the pipe, not, not Nick to the top of it, ripped it, ripped it through. Yeah. There's nothing sanitary about a sanitary line. Let me tell you. Uh, and so at that time I didn't have the, uh, the skills to just tell the guy, like I'll run the equipment. You do that. I was the intern. So I, uh, <laughs> you didn't have mad cache at the time. <laughs> no, no. So I, uh, I remember going and finding like a PVC pipe that was long enough and going to try to like get it from one side to the other while, uh, while we tried to get the hotel to stop. Cause it was literally as people were starting to flush their toilets when they got to the hotel room, it was just awful. <laughs> yeah, I want to ask yeah. more questions. Like what, I, what I'm imagining is like when someone were to like stab someone in the arm and like, it's just squirting like no it, it was like a, a like a, a little bit and then it just kept coming uh, like, a, like a hotel announcement please everybody do not flush your toilets for the next 20 minutes it was awful <laughs> uh, Shut it down. so I, I think i stayed there about two hours late waiting for someone to come back to the job site to put a temporary uh fix on that and i finally drove home and i had this i I wasn't going to touch my cell phone. Let's just put it that way. And so I get home two hours late and my mom looks at me like, where have you been? I'm just covered (laughs) dirt and other stuff. And, uh, And yeah, I told her I've been in a hole of shit. And that was the first time my mom heard me cuss. Literally. And uh, I'm sorry, mom, if you're hearing this again, but I had to tell the story. Um, Oh, yeah, man. You wonder. You wonder why more people don't want to work in construction. I mean, that sounds awesome. <laughs> this isn't exactly a great way to like recruit yeah. young, young professionals. This is, this is the part. This is the part where we don't. We're not recruiting right now. Uh, well, this is why. Yeah, this is why. Uh, I guess you go to school, or if you bless the guys that want to be in the trades, because man, that that is it's a tough. No, this deal. is this is why like, you take trades. Oh yeah, this is why I take pictures. So you know that it's seven feet and not fourteen feet, so you don't dig and hit the damn sanitary line. Uh, what are that? This is really just an endorsement of Struction Site. Yeah, if only they had Struction Site. Maybe that's the future podcast. Those as belts were not correct. They were not correct. Wrong. Tragically incorrect. Tragically, it caused me a pair of jeans and a a (laughs) pair of boots too. So, and and your mother didn't you know didn't really care for your language. Yeah. So there might be a picture of that. I, I'll have to. I'll have to go look. Can you I remember, I remember being so us? dirty that my my sister my sister was like perfectly clean, and then there's me, and it was like look at my kids on their they're at work, and I I think that exists. <laughs> I gotta I gotta go look for that one. Yeah, that's not Off that's that. not the ideal day to take your kid to work. Mm-mm. You know. So uh, yeah, the dinner table that night, I go, hey, I think it's time that I. Uh, <laughs> join the office life. Uh, <laughs> I think I've learned enough in the field. Um, That's a perfect. It's obviously it stuck with me though. So t- t- like, so, you know, you're, you went, well, it's a, it's a bit of a, a, a trip from, you know, digging trenches and sweeping to being in construction technology. Like how, what was it that kind of drove you into that, in that direction? Besides the well, sewer pipe. 
<laughs> that was the obvious. This can never. I'm never going to work I was here again. Running. Unless, yeah, I was running from that. Uh, <laughs> well, so when I I I went off and did my own thing after college, worked for a couple companies, and then um, I came and worked for Andrus. Started from the bottom again uh, as an office engineer, and was out in the field, and uh, people were just kind of asking me questions from other job sites about how I was doing things and. And that kind of led into just getting into this role of op tech, um, which uh, the coolest thing I ever did was like month two into my role, I found Matt and Philip at a conference and was like, whoa, these 360 cameras, you know, I wish I had one of the original ones, but these 360 cameras, like, man, I wish I had that on my job. Uh, you know, I remember writing an RFI specifically that was hey this pipe over here goes from this side then goes across and then you know goes back up over here and here's how the joists sit and we had pictures from a, a third party company which I'm not a, know if I'm allowed to say those but we'll just say a third party uh, company took these pictures and I spent probably four hours marking up pictures and saying photo one is here and this is where photo two lines up to see this is photo two and then okay here's how photo photo three goes to the ceiling and photo four goes to this side you know and, okay and now here's the opposite direction it was the worst and i was like man <laughs> with these 360 cameras you just take one picture and you can see everything in there and how it all works together it's just like that was that was when the eyes opened and I was just like, okay, we're we're on the verge of some something cool in construction. And uh I mean I think construction site really started kicking off just all of our other adoption of things. We were already using Procore, but we kind of almost lucked into Procore because we've been using it for twelve years, um, uh, with what they've become. But uh definitely saw the vision with construction site early. Yeah, man, you were, I still remember being at that very first groundbreak. Uh, yeah, that's where it was. Although I did not know that you were two months into your job at that point. You were, you were really doing a good job of faking it till you make it, you know. Fake it till you make uh, it. Couldn't, couldn't tell that you were brand new on the Optech job. Yep. Uh, but that was, yeah, that was, that was like groundbreak 2017, maybe 2018, maybe 2018. I might have been 2017, man. I don't know. It was, it was, that was our first trade show ever. Yeah, I think, I think it was 2017. Well, I found you right at the beginning. So yeah, you, you kind of touched on it, you know, like that was one very specific example where you had a nightmare RFI where you're like trying to stitch together eight pictures to talk about, you know, something you could have talked about in one, like, you know, uh, you know, tell us a little bit more about life, life before instruction site. You know, um, I know that was probably a really dark time for you. Things are very sad. Very dark. You didn't have, you didn't have me and Chris in your life. So like things are probably terrible. I understand. So, but yeah, like what is, what is, what is what's life like before, uh, you know, before instruction site and before you have a little bit of that, you know, in addition so, to that, sort of that RFI experience was. Yeah. So, I mean, if we back up all the way to like when I was an intern, and that was when people were having digital cameras on their job site with SD cards that were this big and not that big to fit a little one in there. Like they were the giant SD cards, right? And uh, photos never made them off there, right? They literally never got off those SD cards. And who knows where they are today? And at, where is image 0001? You know, <laughs> so... Uh, JPEG. Uh, yeah, that JPEG. <laughs> <laughs> IMG 0001 JPEG. Uh, yeah, I mean, it, they'd say go take pictures, and it's like, okay, we'll take pictures, you know, but where were they stored? How are they, how is it organized? It was, it was kind of just like, hey, digital pictures exist. We should, we should be taking those for construction. But there was no like, you know, process around how to do it you know, how to organize it, where they're stored, right? Um, and so eventually it comes a service that solves that problem. And that was that third party service. And they came and they came and took pictures as we scheduled them to. And that was, it worked for a while. 
but we we had issues with that too, mainly with scheduling and getting people to the job as we needed them because we'd finish you know something and it's like okay well they need to come in and sheetrock that immediately so there wasn't that that time that buffer time to schedule and get someone out there and it's just just one more thing to do of scheduling and keeping up with did they come did they not am i am i good to go because they'd also have some lag time to getting the photos uploaded to where we could see them you know so do we know that they're uploaded and that they have them uh and probably the the biggest thing was finding out that they had missed areas due to a scheduling conflict on our side or from what the last time they told me was that they accidentally took pictures over the pictures on a project the next Monday. They came and took pictures on Friday of an area, and then that photographer went and took pictures on another job and overwrote the card. And they're like, we'll come back and take those pictures. I'm like, yeah, we've already moved past that. We poured concrete. Like, well, there's no just, we don't just undo p- concrete pours to take pictures of all the rebar now. Like, it's, that's over. Like, we missed the opportunity. Um, so one thing so, we like to think about here too, j- just to poke at that for a minute and kind of pull on that thread is like, what's the impact of that, right? They're either don't have the data, it's not available, or you can't find it. Like, what happens when that when that's the case, right? Because I think it's uh, it's easy to think about like, hey, it's great to have you know a record of what has happened and when, but but what's the impact of not having that? Well, kind of gets me into a story, right? Uh, start so our, our story time. So our first um, our first project that we did with construction site, uh, it was small little building. We were we were testing it out, right? It was. Um, in Dallas, in the farmer's market area. And uh, we had gotten to our second elevated pour, and the uh, engineer comes out and says, hey, y'all are missing this on the pour. And we're like, oh my gosh, did we did we include that on the last pour too? And the engineer goes, yes, yeah, I saw it, you're good, right? And we're like, well, let's go back and check, because we took photos this time. So we went and looked at the photos, saw they weren't there, and then we're able to write the RFI, get the problem solved because we attack issues. We don't want we don't want to wait for them to come up later on. So we attacked the issue, got the RFI solved. You know, it cost it cost the subcontractor a lot of money because he forgot it, but it probably could have caused more damage and stuff later on. But so that's where using the photos during construction, we were able to get something solved during construction rather before we got to the top out and started getting all these weird cracks and things. And so um, not having that capture, we would have either relied on the, the guy that said, no, I saw it, or and then had issues later on down the road, um, or we probably would have had to go on an x-ray you know, every single location where that should have been to see if it was there. And that's, you know, tons of money. So, um, you know, Simple 360 camera can can do it a lot for a job site. Um, just it's that peace of mind. Yeah, those issues only compound, right? They just get bigger and bigger the later and the later you get. Like, I love that idea yep. of just sort of like, hey, we got to attack this issue. I, I love that that phrase. Even like, no, we're not going to wait around for this to be some huge problem for us down the road. Like, we know that we got to figure this out. Let's go figure it out now before it becomes a problem. The idea that like you actually have some tools in place that can help you with that is is cool. I feel a little bit bad for that subcontractor, but ultimately, don't forget to put that in. Yep. Hey, better to learn the lesson on the beginning of the project than to, you know, do it wrong the whole way through. Yep. Yeah. Totally. That's a good story. Thank you. Let's switch gears here. I feel like this is a topic that is uh, near and dear to Chris's heart. As as our uh, head of head of customer success, which is adoption, you know. So the, you're you're the operations technology leader at the company. This is probably one of your biggest challenges: is not just bringing a new piece of technology to the field, but actually getting people to use it. Um, so t- t- take us through what the what that process looked like for construction site. What were some of the bumps in the road that you hit? And, and how were you able to, to sort of overcome those and, and ultimately operationalize this technology as something you guys are using 
uh, across all your projects. Yeah. Okay. So kind of initial rollout. Um, we, I, I picked a couple champions, uh, that were just, you know, go getters with new things. Um, and I put 360 cameras in their hands and, you know, let them loose. And we talked, okay, hey, let's do this, 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 and this. Okay. Here's, you know, kind of laid out some, some ideas and we, we just let them kind of run with it. Um, and so having those champions kind of let other people to go in, okay, Hey, I want, I want that too. What do I need to do to be successful with that? And so, um, that kind of was the grassroots initiative to it. Um, but then we kind of had to get to like a more systematic way of capturing. Um, and that's where with Procore, we use inspections. Uh, and that's pre-port inspections, pre-rock inspections, you know, all the way through. And uh, at the bottom of every inspection, it says, did you take your 360 photo use instruction site? Uh, every single inspection. And so it reminds people, okay, I, I need to go in and take that picture. And they can't check that off without taking the picture because if I pull up that report and there's not a picture of that area, then, you know, they're, they're pencil whipping it. So um, it's kind of, Instruction site is now like our way of, of stamping your name to that inspection. Hey, I went in and, and did this inspection. Here's, here's the 360 photo of all those things done correctly. Um, so it, it put a process to it. Uh, and I think that's kind of what you have to do now. Uh, the, the like getting people from taking photos on their, their iPhone camera roll and putting those into instruction site, that is a daily battle. Um, you know, daily, daily battle. Um, cause some people just don't, they don't think that it's going to be important. That one, that one picture they took isn't going to be important later. So why do I need to add it? Uh, but you know, it is important. It possibly will be important to see, you know, that, that, um, specific day, of how some flashing was installed, you know, in an area, because maybe there was, there was water on it and they're wondering why mold grew there. So, uh, you know, every picture is important to us. And that's, you know, that's where our, our now um, big push is, is to getting every picture on instruction site, no matter what. Do you think your staff are like figuring that out now? Like, I think that's definitely a big part of adoption for us is really getting the people that are taking the photos to understand that there's value there, right? That the process is valuable. And until you kind of have that aha moment, it feels like an extra task until all of a sudden, you know, you're using it for some coordination meeting or you're like, oh, shoot, that photo that I took actually is helping us figure something out. Like, do you, do you feel like that's starting to stick with, with the folks that are there or is kind of a slow yeah. process or... Yeah. So the cool thing about construction is one of the first things we do is concrete and you can't, you can't erase concrete. Like you can sheetrock, you know, just, Hey, is that there? I know. Old school way is just hammer the wall. Look, if it's there. Okay. Well, let's patch it. You know, um, you can't do that with concrete very easily. And so, um, cool part is we take those pictures for construction site with concrete first and people see that value of, Oh, I've, I need to go back and look at that to see if we got that there or, is that embed in place or, um, you know, did the, the PT cables actually a big one is, uh, electrical, uh, boxes, how the conduits run under the, the concrete, you know, people would be fishing fish tape through those and trying to figure out where it popped up. Um, uh, so we, we follow electrical lines a ton of times in the, in the, in the slab. Uh, and so people see those benefits early on in the job site and, because every time it's a new project, you know, I don't care who you are, you're going to always forget, you know, how to do things. Um, just having to do it, you know, you didn't do it for two years, you know, now it's starting back over. You see the value again. Okay, here's why I'm doing it. Uh, so pouring concrete at the beginning definitely makes it, um, you know, stick in their heads that they need to capture stuff because you just can't erase it. How much was like creating a top-down standard operating procedure and kind of getting a bottoms-up groundswell from the team where people are realizing like, whoa, this is something that actually is making my job better and and pushing it bottoms-up 
Like, what's the sort of mix of those two things? It, I mean, it was pretty even, um, you know, probably more so because I was pushing hard. I was like, this is super cool. We need to use it. And then there's the field guys where they're also like, there's some guys that were like, this is awesome. You had the naysayers who were like, no, it was awesome when I could just have someone else do it for me. You know, uh, <laughs> you know, there, there are always going to be those people. Oh, this is change. And it's changed to me having to do something. But uh, structure site makes it so easy that, you know, you literally just have to walk around with a camera and you're, you're taking the pictures. You got to walk in those units anyways. You might as well take a picture. Uh, so, I, yes, it was both top down and bottom up. Um, but the bottom up is it's a little tougher because you have to find your champions. You have to find the people that that are good at adopting things and sticking to it. That's that's the biggest thing is anyone can try something, but can they stick to it? Um, and you, so you got to just push push on and, and continue going with it. Where do you see that headed? I'm going to take a little bit of a different turn here. It's like, yeah, it's super easy, but there are definitely going to be some, you know, advancements there. Like we are always kind of keeping our sort of fingers on the pulse of autonomous capture. And, you know, obviously anything that, you know, you know, that, 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 you know, minimizes the amount of work that folks have to do and get the same value from it is, is a huge opportunity. Like where do you, where do you see that going? That's a fun one for me, passive versus active capture. Um, you know, because once you get to passive capture, you can start analyzing things like safety and stuff like that, too. When you're actively walking through with a camera, you know, people tend to be a little safer. Um, but, you know, when, hey, that, well, hopefully that robot dog, when it walks by you, you know, you're probably looking at it right now, but it, are you looking at it and changing what you're doing or are you just looking at it because that's cool? Uh, we'll see. Um, you know, I, I definitely want to get to the point and I, I believe we're on our way of, you know, just passive capture, um, constantly feeding the job site. Um, you know, it's, it's really critical for us, at the, you know, the main office to see what's going on on the job sites, to know where they're at, uh, to know what's, what's starting, what's, you know, where there's paused work, uh, be able to, check in and make sure like they're, you know, using the right materials, just everything. Right. Uh, you know, it's for schedule. Uh, and I think COVID taught us a lot about, uh, you know, virtual work and remote work and, you know, how do we stay up to jobs when we can't go onto a job, you know, and how do you, how do you just basically keep up with everything? Um, my dad, my dad, um, He's a little, he's a little weird sometimes. You might have to cut that, but, uh, my, my, my dad, my dad will, uh, often think about construction tech in a way of if he were ever, uh, in a wheelchair, if he ever got in a car wreck and, and had to be in a wheelchair, how would he continue to do his job? And, uh, construction sites, one of those things where if you have that on your project, you can see everywhere in your project. You know, because job sites aren't really wheelchair accessible. Uh, so you can still walk the job, see what's going on, manage your schedule. Um, and those that kind of technology, uh, it's going to allow our, our people to work on more projects. Um, you know, a superintendent can be on multiple projects now because he can see, you know, both projects. As long as there's daily capture or at least weekly capture, uh, you know, you can start you start growing in a way that you couldn't before. Yeah. We talk a lot about that. I feel like I don't necessarily want to get too, too far off topic, but like with labor shortages and like being able to like be in more places, like, you know, making sure that your you know, your a team is on as many projects as possible. Right. Like it's going to require that level of sort of remote functionality to some degree. Right. Yep. Well, I mean, in Texas, in Dallas alone, we're supposed to like double the size of Dallas or DFW by like 2030 or something like that. Like, seems ridiculous. In eight to 10 years, you're going to double the size of an entire city. But that's with construction. And like, we're going to have to build stuff. And 
it's not like you're going to have, you know, every, or all these companies just start hiring a bunch of other contractors. Like there's, there's a limited number of people that are doing this because those people that are moving here are going to be doing other things. And so how do you get more efficient at building in order to continue to stay up with, you know, the increasing demand for construction? Yeah, we've heard some some pretty interesting things. Matt and I have been out and about traveling around for the last six months or so, and we've heard some really interesting things. I think, Matt, you've been you've been sort of talking a little bit about you know, kind of having like an office based sort of project management team, right? That's like it's got like Struction Site and you know Procore or whatever construction management app you've got, and it's like you're kind of managing it from like a control center almost is, is some of the thinking there. Yeah, th- this is this is like Warren, your, your John's dad was actually one of the first people to ever sort of pitch me on this idea of the the super who's managing multiple projects with all these different technologies at their fingertips and 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 sort of giving giving the people that have the knowledge the superpower of sort of being on multiple jobs and having enough stuff coming in now that you could actually do that. Um, yeah, I think, I think that's, I think it's going to be really, you know, we sort of watched VDC as a, as a function sort of emerge in the past, maybe decade or so, maybe longer. And, and I, I, it's, I don't know how you feel about this, John, like, do you see maybe another emergence almost of a, a function with, within a company that is kind of what, what your dad is describing, where you have a, a team of people who, are looking for more flexibility in the workspace, can't necessarily or, or don't want to be necessarily on the job site every single day. Like, you know, this is an on-site industry. We'll never go away from not being on the job site ever. But how can we supplement that with a, another way of bringing the job site into the office so that, so that you know, ultimately you guys as a builder, in order to meet that demand of DFW growing 2Xing itself in a decade, with, you know, are you going to get 2x the amount of people? I think that's kind of the point you were making, right? You won't, right? The people that move wow. there won't all decide to show up and work in construction. Uh, you'll have to find ways of, of multiple, you know, of scaling up your company without scaling up your headcount uh, one-to-one. Um, like, you know, like, maybe maybe talk about that for a minute, like, because it sounds like you guys have a plan and, yeah. and, and some ideas uh, and, and maybe, we're, you know, like, uh, how are you guys thinking about it? So... I mean, we obviously are seeing, you know, as a lean, like we're on a lean journey, right? And that's cliche to say, but everyone says they're on a lean journey. Uh, and on our lean journey, we're, we're thinking about that. We're thinking about how to, how to, you know, centralize some of these jobs to where you can work on multiple things. Um, you know, submittal review. Like why, why are we having guys that are, that are going and, Two years from now, they're going to go back and do the same submittal review. So they're doing concrete submittals today. And then their job gets to framing and plumbing and, and finishes out. And then they start over again on their next project two years from now. Right. So they forget what they're looking at. It, you know, it's, it's something that they have to learn new versus something that you do every day. And so, um, you know, what are those things that we can do in construction that we do, you know, that you don't do every single day? Maybe it's MEP review or, you know, framing inspections, you know, those things where someone that uh, does that often and is really good at it, how do you empower that person to do that across more projects in more geographical locations? Um, and so, you know, Smittles is one, but just, just reviewing things, you know, for, hey, is this done right? Did we overbore all these holes for the plumbing so that the plumbing is not going to crack? You know, that kind of thing can be done with pictures. Um, and that's where the, the passive, like, daily capture where, you know, spot robot dog is running around our jobs and, you know, feeding us all this information, uh, we're going to get to, uh, I'm pretty excited about it. I, I think, I think, uh, being able to have, well, one, it, it lowers your, your, uh, overhead, right? Because you're able to have fewer guys that are on that job and you're able to build people that are in the office at 50%, you know, to that job versus a hundred percent of that job. And so we can actually, you know, lower our, our overhead and become even more competitive in the market. Uh, so yeah, we're, we're excited. Uh, it's crazy. Future how, school. Yeah. It's crazy how many inefficiencies there are, right? I mean, it is, I mean, just, we talk a lot at Struction Site just about, you know, the 
the, the I think Matt calls it the uh, the silent killer of of just like super inefficient. Like we're walking to the job site again, we're driving to the job site again. Like how much time there is in just like moving from point A to point B. Like versus having kind of a command center, right, where you have, you know, access to all this information right in front of you and you don't actually have to walk back over or whatever. And it's crazy to me how much like just COVID is actually sort of inspired us in this weird way. Like one of the real benefits was like, actually, we can do a lot of this stuff remotely. It, it actually fueled a lot of this. Like, I, I think one of the one of the boons to our business was COVID. It's such a weird thing to say, but like it got people thinking we can actually do this from, yeah, I really like the idea of like a control center or a command center. Like I'm right here. Like I, I can see what's happening, right? If you're doing daily capture, there's so much you could do just the very next morning or at the end of the day when you're just seeing everything that was put in place or whatever. I just think it's such a, like the world just changed a lot over the last few years. And I think it's really inspired uh-huh. a lot of change there. Yeah, and, and you can make people that are new to the industry pretty powerful with construction site in, in that con- kind of control center way of, you know, if you have the 3D model there and you have daily capture and now you can see, okay, yesterday they installed off the model, you know, and, and if that daily capture, you've got a remote person that's able to follow where construction is, stay up on top of all that stuff. And you don't have to be a 20-year veteran. You know, you could be fresh out of college and go, hey, that's that's not you know per the model that doesn't look right that doesn't look right you know raise the flag and then let the guys that are on site you know solve it you know so that the the biggest thing i'm seeing now is the guys on site we shouldn't waste their time finding the issues they should spend their time solving the issues and and how can we support with technology to find issues and put it into their hands to go solve um because uh, I've said before, like we need to take the emotion out of construction, keep passion, but take the emotion out. Um, and because if you've been on a job site, you can, you, there's always going to be a heated conversation between someone. It's just a bunch of guys, some you know, guys and girls out there, just, you know, it, it's a different world. Um, and so, uh, personality conflicts, you know, happen. And how do we, how do you work around personality conflicts? You know, someone might think that you're picking on them for, for finding these issues too often, you know, Oh, Hey, you're being too, too picky here. And, you know, this other job site doesn't do that. You know, take the emotion out. Hey, this third party or this guy that's off site, I don't even know him gave me this list of all the things you need to do. I'm going to, I'm going to follow up and make sure you get that list done. I mean, it's so much easier to have that relationship with the person on site, you know, when you're finding that, that common enemy, that's, far away you know um, they found all your problems but they're not there on the job site right they're yeah just, yeah you, know, you gotta solve them <laughs> hey it, you know someone else did this to you yeah, it's it's not me but let's get them fixed you know it's a lot easier to come at that thing than hey i found 20 things you did wrong i can't believe you did this wrong you know fix them right now you know so it's a totally different um relationship you have with someone when you know you're just saying hey here's here's what i'm being told that's wrong and we need to get these fixed versus I found this stuff that you did wrong, you know, cause you're immediately they're, they're going to put up a wall. Uh, and it's, it's how we've done construction for a long time. And, and those walls get put up and, you know, people, people do a good job managing those relationships and managing through those uh, differentiations of people's you know, personalities. Uh, just, but, bl- just blame structure site. Structure site found the issue. Yeah, exactly. It's not even me. I wasn't even looking for it. Instructions, I just it's, found it. Yeah, it's, it's, it's the computer's fault. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Right? Blame, well, it's, blame it's, AI. It's true, though, right? Isn't it a little bit like, look, this is how it's supposed to get built. This was the plan. Here's what actually got built. This is incorrect. I don't want to be the, the, like, don't kill the messenger, man. Instructions, I found it or whatever, right? Like, yep. it's wrong. Attack the issue. Fix it. Attack see how the I, issue. See how I'm incorporating that yeah, phrase? The I, I, re- I told you, I really like that phrase. I'm yep, using attack it. the issue, not the person. For I'm sure. gonna start teaching my kids like attack your homework. <laughs> attack it. It, it, it. When the issue is broccoli on your plate, then just attack, attack the issue. It, right? Attack, attack the broccoli. Attack the broccoli. I never thought. I'm not a dad, so uh, <laughs> <laughs> honestly, I got the dad jokes, not the dad experience. I know we're I know we're early in our podcasting career, Matt, but I don't. I certainly would not have expected us to get to attack the broccoli. 
this early. <laughs> like, you know, look, unexpected. It's all it's all up from here, Chris. It's all up from here. <laughs> the choice of podcasting. <laughs> Back the issue sometimes, you know, not the person. Sometimes if you're if you're three year old, the issue might be vegetables. I, but uh, I, 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 it, it very it very often is. But <laughs> honestly, like I think this is a really interesting point um, that you bring up, John, because it, it really is like we we spend so much time fighting each other when really what we're trying to do is just build the dang thing the way it was planned to be built, right? Like, I love this idea of just like, you know, just resolution between plan and actual, right? Like, look, dude, just we want to get as close to that as we can, right? We want the thing to look as close to the plan as it can, possibly can, right? And it like, don't don't yell at me, man, you put the pipe you know, eight inches too high. Like that's, it's like, yeah, like I, it's, it's, it's not you delivering that information at some point in the future. It's the, the instruction site found that you're eight inches out. Like this is a thing. I, you got to deal with it. It's like, don't like, this isn't a, I'm not mad at you. <laughs> like, yeah, you know, you didn't steal my girlfriend. I'm just trying to tell you the pipe's not in the right dang place. Like fix it. And I, mm -hmm. I feel like, a lot of this, in a weird way, kind of takes, you're right, it really takes the sort of emotion out of it, right? It takes the personal out of it and allows you to just like, you know, get get stuff done faster and it like minimize the total amount of crap you got to fix later on. Yeah. Okay. When you when you came to someone with, with something you found, you know, there's an excuse. You know, I'm not done yet. I wasn't, I wasn't done yet. I was still working in that area. You know, Spot ate my home. It's like, yeah. <laughs> Spying my homework. Um, so you know, like, I mean, we've had it. We we do a lot of wood frame construction, and they miss putting a door in. You know, it's like when it's all wood. Hey, you can walk through that wall, you can get to that room and stuff. But then, you know, some third party person says, "Hey, you forgot to put your door in there." You know, if I if I went on the site and said, "Hey, you need to cut a door in here," I'm not done yet with that area. You know, they might literally forget that they have to do that. And it'd be something to do a little late, but their excuse is going to be, well, I'm not done in that area yet. You know, but if you have a list now, now someone that's back in the main office is saying, Hey, look, here's something you need to track, you know, versus it just being kind of back of mind on the job site. Still don't so, see a door. I still don't see a door. I see you moving exactly. out. <laughs> it's no door. It's, it's just something to track, track, you know? Yeah. So, Intelligent project tracking is what it sounds like to me. It does sound like that. What do you think about that, Matt? We should we should hang on to that. Y'all should maybe do something with that. Hey, We're let's try. Let's let's move to Procore. I know, like you know, you you mentioned that you sort of fell into Procore. Uh, you know, I, I I doubt that's true. I'm sure you figured that there was something really useful about it a long time ago, and it's grown with you. Um, but I I, I want to know a little bit more. Like one of the you know we. One of my passions at Struction Site, to be honest with you, is is workflow enablement for like photo first workflows, things like an RFI that, you know, look, this pipe is wacky. I want to be able to generate an RFI right inside of a 360 photo. You like that whole thing that you were talking about earlier could have been so easy with Struction Site, right? You snap the photo back on your machine, you generate an RFI right in that photo, it gets logged directly to Procore. Like, tell us a little bit more about your journey with Procore, where things are working in terms of like integrations and kind of what, what, you know, where, where you see some of that going. I, I like, you're a perfect person to ask this of, I don't think there's a piece of Procore swag that you don't have. Yeah, I know. I'm, I'm pretty Procore. Um, I'm embarrassed. I'm not wearing anything Procore today. Um, but, but yeah, I say if we fell into Procore, I say we fell into the fact that they're like the best at what they do um you know we found them early on and and helped help them you know kind of kind of like how we've been alongside y'all um from an early standpoint but you know we're believers in finding tech early and failing fast and failing often and getting you know getting something uh built that's going to help us uh, and not try to just fit into something but that's kind of another story but um with Procore, you know, the integration, uh, you know, like I was saying earlier, it's having having those pictures that you can speak to in, a, in a, an RFI um, makes the whole situation in the RFI uh, that much clearer. 
uh, and not having to digest multiple pictures and understand how things go. Um, and just being able to quickly do that from, you know, from within instruction site, uh, you know, it's steps that we're taking, you know, away from having to do, take this picture, download it here, save it here, upload it there. You know, it's just a bunch of steps and people don't do that because it takes too much time. Um, you know, we're trying to get these answers quickly. And so, um, you know, instruction site's been a real help there. The, uh, another cool thing that, you know, we kind of don't think about it so often is, um, you know, because it's in the cloud, uh, you know, and I'm sitting in the trailer and I've got a question and this architect, you know, responds to an RFI and goes, well, what does it look like? You know? And then I'm like, well, crap, I don't have a, I don't have a picture of that. You know, you can text the superintendent, superintendent or assistant superintendent and say, Hey, can you go to room, you know, 303 and take a picture of this that we're having this issue on? They can take it on their phone or on a 360 camera, upload it, and then I can go pull a link and, and attach it right there. You know, again, that's, that's kind of where you get into that control center deal. You know, the guy who's writing the RFI doesn't also need to be the person that's going out to the field, take the picture. You know, it's a team environment in construction. Uh, which is something that's really cool about construction it is it is a team. Um, so relying on your other team members to help you capture that stuff, you know, that's, it's wasting time to stop writing the RFI, go out to the field, take a picture, get back out. I mean, if you've got a, a material hoist that you have to wait on, I mean, it can be, uh, we track that stuff. So, I mean, average time is about 10 minute wait time on a, on a hoist on one of our 40 story buildings. Um, you know, some of the lower ones, maybe it's a six minute wait time, the six minutes to get up and go take a picture and six minutes to go down. Plus the walking time between, I mean, you're, you're talking probably 20 minutes, 30 minutes, um, you know, depending on your project, just go take a picture versus someone who's already there. Hey, just take it, send it, put it in the cloud, you know, bada bing, bada boom. That's a sound bite. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, that's been a game changer. Um, you know, something that you, you couldn't do with a third party and you couldn't do with just a regular old digital camera. Um, iPhones and the cloud with Structure Site has, has changed, you know, has changed what, how we do things. Uh, what what about, about uh, you mentioned question. earlier that 3D model integration or basically saying you guys, like there's like a side-by-side -side thing you guys have going on. Obviously, we've got, We've got an integration there too. Like, what are you guys doing with that? And, and how is it, what's been the feedback from it? And um, would love to hear any good stories you have there. That's probably the coolest integration out there. Um, you know, that definitely one of the coolest uh, and very, very, very powerful. Um, uh, let's think. We, we rolled it out on a project down in Houston um, and immediately <laughs> it was actually really funny. We we're doing just the demo and, uh, I looked at something and I was like, wait, that sleeve isn't, it is like going this way. Why, why is this happening? I was able to go and talk to VDC and, uh, like there was actually a clash after the fact on a, on a, on a floor that had been signed off. Um, and you could see that it was actually causing an issue in the field where they didn't know what to do. And, they, and there wasn't an RFI on it. And I was actually able to alert it to the project team from a demo before they even caught it in the field, before anyone raised their hand in the field and, and found it. Uh, and it was actually something that was caused because they didn't model something correctly. Uh, and then when they sent their final model in, we included it, but didn't reclash it. Uh, but then I was able to go show VDC, hey, look, there's this issue and it's going to repeat on every floor. Let's make sure we, we clash against it. And we luckily we caught it like two floors behind where they were. So, um, and on a 40 something story building there, there's some real time savings uh, by catching yourself before you do it 40 times. Uh, so, I mean, it's just, it's just so cool that you have that. I wasn't even involved in the project, right? I had no project experience on that project to know what their drawings are about to know how things interacted and the outsider looking in was able to raise the flag and say look there's something going on here you know what what is it let's fix it so we get better 
Uh, so that it's that makes it so powerful. I mean, we've, we've got people that are coming out of college that have zero construction experience, and they're going from 2D drawings or you know some other whole trade or you know something where they didn't even know what a drawing was, right? And these people were relying on them to go and find errors and things. And, you know, now you give them a model and the model's great. You can go and look in the model, but then you're having to still look and compare and go, what is that? What is this? What is that? But now with construction side, if you just take the picture right there and you can actually see it side by side, you know, it's way easier to do side by side comparison than it is to do this or, you know, even trying to hold the iPad up and do the, you know, thing. I mean, congrats, Procore, that, that, that is an awesome tool. Um, Dave McCool over there, shout out. Awesome, awesome tool. But I think construction site definitely takes it a step further uh, by by being able to line those up side by side. Yeah, that's awesome. I mean, um, I think we're just we're gonna see more and more of that. And it, it kind of feels like the foundation of what you're what we're talking about with respect to how do you get more people into this field that can help and that can move the needle and that can help you guys scale your business. With without having to have a twenty year vet uh, to do every new project, um, so yeah, I think I think we're we're pretty excited about that as well, and obviously, lots lots more to come, sort of in that vein. We're super excited about continuing to to integrate. Right, we're we're a part of a bigger workflow, and so you know it's really critical for us to continue to think about how we move data freely from system to system. I think one of the things that we're you know, that, that, that really defines us is our openness and our willingness to sort of, you know, partner with other organizations and other tools to make sure that, you know, data is flowing freely and that we're really facilitating workflows and not, you know, helping to minimize, you know, duplicate entry, things like that. So no, I just, I'm excited to see, you know, obviously always, always excited to hear that, that that's really making an impact and, and that those integrations are, are working for you. So no, I don't. I don't think so. I, we we actually only have about five minutes left. I, it's hard to believe we've been kind of cruising along. So it, time flies when you're having fun, I guess, or when you're attacking broccoli. <clears throat> um, <laughs> but I want to talk about results a little bit. Like, you know, I know that you know one of the things that we want to try to get after here is like, you know, really ultimately, you know, figuring out where the sort of rubber meets the road for you guys and and where the where the value is that we're we're driving. So. Yeah, I'd love to just sort of ask you, you know, John, where, you know, where does the rubber meet the road for you guys? Like, where are we actually providing impact? I mean, we've talked, I think, touched on it a little bit, but anything else you want to kind of talk about there would be super helpful. So I think something important to remember is that, you know, the photos, the photos have immediate impact into what I, what happened last week before we covered it up, you know, and then they're also going to have the the long-term impact of, okay, we're their owner's selling the building and you want to make sure things are waterproofed correctly, or this latent defect comes up and uh, I want to make sure I have documentations of everywhere that defect possibly could have occurred so that it doesn't compound and, and they say, well, this water leak, that this window, you've got 500 windows and we don't have pictures of it flashed properly. So, you know, cost thousand dollars a window, five hundred thousand dollars. You know, pay me. So you know, there's we've had a few projects uh, where we let's just say we wished we had construction site on um, after the fact. Um, it it would have been something to just say, here you go. You know, we know we did everything correctly, um, and we have that that confidence because we can see it. Uh, versus relying on someone saying, no, we did it correctly. Um, and we had people come out and look at that. It was done correctly, right? You know, like I said earlier, we had an engineer come out of the site and he thought that we had done it correctly on the, the previous, just like the previous four days, you know? And so now you're going to try to say a year, five years, seven years down the line, oh, we did that correctly. No, you got to have the pictures. So um, we definitely... Uh, that's our, our return on investment is, is our peace of mind. Um, you know, that it's very, very difficult, especially in Texas, we have 10 year statute of repose. Um, so for latent defects for up to 10 years, we've got to be able to 
you know, prove that we did it right. Um, and, you know, 10 years is a long time to sleep well at night. So my dad is the risk manager and he, he's, uh, he's very happy having these pictures, knowing that he can go back and look at anything at any time. 10 years of good sleep. You heard it here first. <laughs> <laughs> and then after that, nightmares. Because uh, you don't have any more pictures. <laughs> we have a final question for you. How, how are you and Andres Construction built different? Oof. Well, I'm built a little heavy set. Um, <laughs> that's how I'm built different. Um <laughs> No, I, I would say at Andrus, we're we're built different by our technology adoption and just by uh, our culture. Um, you know, we're like I said, we're we're fast to to implement things because we want to we want to fail fast so we can learn fast. Um, you know, I, I don't think there's anything wrong in saying that. You know, we we. Uh, we want to figure out how to do things the best way. And the only way to do that is to, is to fail and fail quickly. Um, so, uh, yeah, I'd say technology implementation and culture. I mean, it, the culture of implementing technology is, is something that you don't see everywhere. Um, I, if any of our employees are watching this, I'm sorry that I, uh, sometimes put a lot on your plate. Um, and I give you a bunch of stuff, but, it, it is, it's bettering the company. Um, and I think, I think a lot of our employees see that, um, you know, we're an employee uh, owned company now, hundred percent employee owned. Um, and so what I, what I tell our guys is the only way to increase the value of our company is to continue to be profitable. And the only way to be profitable is to make sure that we don't have losses. And the only way to make sure that we don't have losses is to make sure we document everything correctly and, and follow these processes that we've implemented. Uh, which, you know, is going to lead them on to a really great retirement, you know. So, uh, you know, it's kind of that family, that family culture and that, you know, we're not afraid to implement something that we see that there's going to be value. That's awesome, man. That's, yeah. That, that's kind of like the startup way, you know, in a, in a way like you would, you know, maybe this existed well, well ahead of Silicon Valley as a, as, as a way of life and a way of running maybe a business or thinking about things. But yeah, it's, you know, maybe build, measure, learn is is what you would call that in the startup world, right? And it is just, just about fast iteration. You can say fail fast, learn fast. You can call it whatever you want. But uh, yeah, man, I don't, I think, I think you're, you're, you're on the right track if that's the approach because that's, you know, it's all about what you learn and how you, how you do the next one better. And it sounds like uh, with doubling the size of, of the DFW Metroplex in the next decade, you guys are, you're going to be doing a lot of learning and a lot of growing in the next decade. Of course. It's going to be fun. Construction is always fun. <laughs> Thanks, John. This brings us, uh, I think this is a wrap for, for, for this build different podcast. I want to thank you, John, for joining us. Super insightful as always and enjoyable. Uh, love attack the issue. I want this to be the attack the issue episode. Um, so yeah, thanks so much. We're 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 happy to have you on and, and have you share some some of your thoughts with us. Thanks for having me. Thanks, Sean. Built Different is brought to you by Struction Site. To find out more about us, head to structionsite.com. Make sure to search for Built Different in Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, Spotify, or anywhere else you listen. Click follow so you don't miss out on any future episodes. On behalf of everyone here at Struction Site, thanks for listening.